Creating automations for your smart home, in my opinion, is really where the magic is. That's one of my favorite things about having a smart home. The home app and home kit makes building automations very simple, but today we're gonna go just a little bit further and talk about this little option that you may have seen when making automations called convert to shortcut. What is that? when to use it, when not to use it. I wanna show you some of the most common ways that I use this convert to shortcut feature that I think can really help you get more out of your HomeKit automations. Let's go. Yo, what's up guys? My name is Shane, if this is your first time here, and this channel is all about building an easy, smart home using Apple's HomeKit with new videos published every Sunday and live streams every Wednesday. Today's video is sponsored by Econet. I've actually been using their Bulldog water shutoff valve for a while now with my smart home. So I was super excited when they reached out about sponsoring the channel. The Bulldog is a retrofit option, so you don't need to cut any pipes or hire a plumber, which I really like. The build quality is fantastic and they have great customer service as well. They have a Z-Wave option. You can connect that to any Z-Wave hub. They also have a Wi-Fi version and no hub is required for that one. Now they don't support HomeKit natively, but both of these do work in HomeKit through HomeBridge, which of course is what I'm doing. They also support smart things, Google Assistant, Alexa, and IFTTT. Now we're talking about automations here today and one of my very favorite smart home, uh, HomeKit automations that I have set up in my house is to turn off the water to my entire house when any of my home kit water sensors detects a leak somewhere. So shutting off the water immediately can potentially save you a ton of money and damages in the event of you know, a water related emergency. Check out my link down below in the description for more information on the Bulldog Valve Robot and big thanks to Econet for sponsoring today's video. So like I said earlier, I wanted to make a video to help give you an understanding of some of the more common and simple ways that you can use this convert to shortcut feature that you see in the Home app when creating your automations. So what is convert to shortcut and what is it for? In the home app, when you create an automation, let's say when another device is controlled, like when you turn on a light, you basically have a few conditions that you can choose from, like location or time of day, but really that's it. What if we wanted more conditions like temperature or the weather outside or other accessories, like if my garage door is open or if there's motion somewhere? That's one example of when using convert to shortcut really comes in handy in my opinion when you convert the automation to a shortcut you can basically get scripting options you know that you can use for your automations now if you've ever created shortcuts with the shortcuts app you'll notice well, first of all, this will look pretty familiar, but you'll also notice that you won't get the usual options that you might see when creating a regular shortcut or you know a personal automation. And that's because this is a home kit or a home automation, meaning this entire automation runs on your home kit hub, whereas regular shortcuts or personal automations, those run on your personal devices like your iPhone or your iPad. Therefore, you have more options because you can do things on an iPhone or an iPad that you can't do on your HomeKit hub, like, you know, open an app or send a text message. So we are a little bit more limited than a regular shortcut, but these scripting options can really come in handy. It's not really as scary as it sounds, trust me. It's actually pretty simple. And I'll show you again some of my, you know, favorite ways of using this. All right, so if I open up the Home app, we're gonna go ahead and tap new um, automation here. And I'm gonna create a couple automations. We're gonna do three of these total. Feel free to check the chapters below if you want to skip around to any certain automation, but um, I'm going to use some of the more common actions and things, uh, ways that I like to use convert to shortcut here in these different automations just to give you an idea. And hopefully you can take this and use it to uh, fit your need. All right, the first automation we're gonna do is basically an automation that will shut the garage door. I like to shut my garage door every night at a certain time, but um, sometimes it has actually happened when somebody's out there and it kind of startles the crap out of whoever is in the garage or near the garage. So I'm gonna create one that will check to see if there's motion in the garage first. So that'll kind of be our condition. And if there's motion, then it's not gonna run that automation. But if there's no motion, then it's gonna run the automation. 
automation. So we're gonna use convert to shortcut for that because there is no other way to do that in the home app. So we're gonna look for uh, time of day occurs and uh, I want it to happen every day. So I'm gonna choose, uh, oh, I need to change the time right there. So let's go with, um, let's go with nine, I don't know, 9.30 p.m. sounds good. Choose next, and if you scroll all the way down, this is normally where you would choose your accessories that you wanna control, but all the way down, you'll see convert to shortcut. I'm gonna tap that, and it, by default, it's gonna give us this action here. You can delete it or you can use it. We're gonna use this uh, same action here in a minute, but um, I'll delete it just to kind of start from scratch and show you. So now you can tap add action, and you can see here we have some scripting actions. Like I said, a lot more limited than you get with regular shortcuts, but um, that's okay. So I'm gonna look for an if action and put that in there. Now, if you only get one thing out of this video, uh, learn how to use this if action. It can really help you out in your automations and you can just do a whole lot with this. So I put in if, if you tap on the input right here, you see you can select your home accessory. So I'm gonna open that and I'm gonna go to my garage and I got a lot of stuff in my garage here, but I'm looking for uh, this circle view. This is a motion sensor right here. Um, I'm gonna choose that. And it's actually a, uh, a camera that I have in my garage door, but or in my garage, but there, you know, there's a motion sensor that is exposed to HomeKit that I can use in automation. So if my garage circle view, that camera detects motion, I actually want to choose if no motion, if motion is not detected. Uh, and now we can, you know, shut the garage. So uh, you can just tap on, you just search for home control your home kit home, and it will put that right in there. And now we can choose our accessory that you wanna control. Again, we are looking for that garage door right there. Choose next and close. So just make sure that is closed and done. So basically at 9.30 p.m., if no motion is detected in the garage right there with from this camera it's going to close the garage door otherwise and i'm really good there i can just hit next but uh, i like to put in a nothing action just to kind of complete it so uh, nothing and i'll put this down here so otherwise do nothing good to go i'll tap next i can change i can rename this so close garage every night okay and you can see 9.30 p.m., it's gonna run that shortcut. So again, it's gonna check for motion first, no motion, then it'll close. And I'm good to go, done. All right, simple enough. Now let's create another one. I'm gonna create an automation. We're gonna use a couple more actions in this one, some other ones I recommend getting familiar with, uh, and that's gonna be the wait action and repeat. So what I'm gonna do is create an automation that will basically flash some lights when like my, let's say when somebody arrives home. So we'll, we'll do some maybe when my wife arrives home. So let's do a new automation, add automation, and this time I'm gonna look for when people arrive, okay? And I wanna do just a specific person. So I'm gonna just turn these off whoop, and turn on just my wife there. And you can select some kind of lo location and time uh, conditions here. So location, I, I need to be home. So that's right. Uh, time, I can do whatever only during the day. That could be handy, but I'm just gonna leave it here for the sake of this video. And again, scroll all the way down, convert to shortcut. All right, so first let's look for the repeat action. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna flash some lights kind of as an alert sort of thing. So uh, the way to do that uh, right here natively in the home app is with the repeat action. So let's just do repeat, I don't know, five times. And we need to look for a light to turn on. So we need to control a home accessory. So control Watley home, okay, and it puts it in there automatically. Now I'm gonna look for a light. Let's say maybe I'm, you know, you're in the office or something and you wanna flash some lights when the wife arrives home, let you know, okay, it's time to stop working, greet the wife, whatever. I have some elements right here that I'll flash. Uh, those are those nano leaf elements and we're gonna turn it on. Okay, all right, so we're done. All right, so that just turns it on. Now we need to turn it off, okay? And in order to do that, I'm gonna do the wait action and then I'm gonna turn it off, all right? So let's add a wait. 
Okay, wait one second is fine. You can add more, less, whatever. Well, not less than a second, that's the lowest. And now we're gonna turn it off. And what I like to do for something like this, if you tap on the icon here, you get some options so you can duplicate. So this just makes building these things quicker. Uh, so it duplicated that one. So I'm gonna drag that down here. Instead of turning on, I want this to turn off. Okay, perfect, done. So repeat five times. Okay, so it's gonna turn on. Wait a second, it's gonna turn off. Uh, and now I need to wait another second after this. So I'm gonna duplicate that drag that down there, and then it's gonna repeat. It's gonna do this five times, okay? And then maybe I want to like set the lights, you know, to a certain, maybe I like them on or off. If you like them off, then you can just leave it here, but I want those lights to be on, you know, in, in the evening or whenever, so, or when she comes home. So I'm gonna duplicate this one more time, duplicate and drag it down here to go after my repeat. So it's gonna repeat, turn on and off five times. And then after it's done with that repeat, it's going to just set them on. I can just make sure, yep, that's on. So that looks good and we're good to go. So if you want to test this out, of course, you have this little play button right here so you can test the automation. So if I tap this, you're going to see, I don't know if you can see it on screen there, but it's green where it shows the action and it's kind of going through all these steps. It's repeating five times. So here it is. And then once it's done, it sets it and it's good to go. So it seems to work here and everything looks good. Also, if I do a test here, uh, oh, if you can see this, so I got my iPad right here. So, and you can actually see it right here, flashing on and off as it's running through that shortcut. Everything is running great. All right, so I'll tap next and I'll say flashlights when Caroline arrives. Flashlights when Caroline arrives, done. Boom, good to go. All right, now let's do one more automation and kind of combine all of these things we just discussed and uh, bring in some more stuff. Let's actually bring in the weather. So this will be pretty cool. I, I was thinking every morning I get up and I turn the security system off is one of the first things I do. Usually my good morning scene has already ran, uh, but I'll turn the security system off, maybe to let out the dog or something like that. And uh, I think this would be a good time to kind of do a quick check of the weather. So we can actually use the security system as the trigger for our automation. So when I turn it off, I can actually convert the automation to a shortcut and check the weather forecast. And if there's like a high chance of rain that day, I can flash you know, the lights in my kitchen blue or something like that for a minute, kind of like we just did uh, with that one. So that would be really cool and give me kind of an idea like, hey, it's a good chance it's gonna rain today. Uh, might wanna, you know, take an umbrella or whatever. So let's go ahead and build that one. We're gonna do add automation and we are looking for an accessory is controlled and I'm gonna go down and let's see security system. Let's go with this one and we're gonna go security system disarms. Okay, so when the security system disarms. Now, this would be a good time to actually utilize this because maybe I don't want to do this at night. Maybe I turn the security system off for some reason at night. So for this, I'm going to go ahead and choose uh, specific times and we're going to go between, let's say between 6 a.m. and 10 a.m. Okay, so this will only run when I disarm the security system between those specific times. Choose next. Scroll on down, find that convert to shortcut. All right, now the first thing we need to do is get the weather forecast. So we can do that here and convert to shortcut um, or in this home shortcut. So let's go for us, type in weather, get current weather at current location. And we're gonna look for, again, that if action. So again, if the precipitation, the chance of rain is really high. So we're gonna tap here. So instead of selecting a home accessory this time, um, I can choose weather conditions, which shows up right here. You can also do select magic variable, which you can go in and choose like the weather conditions. Um, so tap that. And here we need to tap this and we need to choose what piece of information we're getting from the weather. So we're looking for that precipitation chance. That's what I want. Okay, so if the precipitation chance is greater than, 
I'll go with 50 because it actually rains quite a lot here, especially in the summertime. Uh, we will go with 50%. So that way, if it's a high chance of rain, then I'll uh, I'll get that notification there uh, to flash my lights. Uh, now, just like the last one, we're going to add a repeat action. All right, so, and it's kind of putting it right there in the places we need to. So all that's really good. So if the chance of rain is high, repeat, let's go with uh, four times. And we're going to look for that home control, your home kit home, put it right in there where we need to. And I'm going to go with my kitchen cabinet lights, choose next. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn them blue. So they're usually on um, in the mornings, like a white color. So I'm going to change them to blue done. Again, we're going to choose that wait action. So we're going to wait a second in between. Okay, that looks good. We can duplicate this one here like we did before. So now we're going to turn them off. So let's make sure those are off. Okay, so turn it on, wait a second, turn it off. We're going to wait one more second. So I'm going to duplicate that wait after we turn them off. Then it's going to repeat. It's going to repeat that four times. Okay, then the in repeat. And again, uh, otherwise we can do nothing. You can do something different if you want to flash the lights green. You can do a green maybe or a different color if, um, you know, if there's no chance of rain, but I'm just going to leave it like it is. Uh, now, one thing I do want to do after this repeat right here, uh, this will leave the lights off. I do want to turn those back on because I like, like I said, I like my lights on, those cabinets on in the morning. So. I'm gonna duplicate that top one again and bring that down here for after the repeat. So that should be, yep, cabinets on 100%, but I don't want it blue. I want it to be that kind of, kind of warm white color, but not too warm. So I'm gonna go with that. Otherwise it'll do nothing and we're good to go. Now I can test this one real quick and let's see what happens. So it's getting the current weather. And it skipped to the end because there's no chance of rain today in the forecast. Let's change this to zero and see if maybe it'll flash our lights now. So let's go ahead and see if this will run now. Checking the weather and it is a higher chance than zero. So now it's running through this repeat right here. It's flashing our lights. And then after that, I don't know if you saw that real quickly, then it set the cabinets and it's done. All right, so it works. Uh, of course, I want to change this back to 50 because I do want it to only run if there's a high chance of rain. Tap next. Let's see, I can name it whatever I want. Rain alert automation. So now when the security system disarms only between 6 a.m. and 10 a.m., if there's a high percentage of rain, it's gonna flash my kitchen cabinet lights blue four times, then set them back to the usual color and I will know if it's gonna rain that day. So pretty cool, right? Using convert to shortcut can really open up some doors, you know, with your automations once you start exploring this. I also set up a really cool home status shortcut for my smart home using Siri shortcuts. It checks the status of my home kit accessories and provides a report showing me, you know, only the things that I wanna know and gives me options to control certain accessories if I need to. You can check out that video right here and over here you can find my automations and shortcuts playlist. Do me a favor and share your favorite shortcut or automation down in the comments below. Always fun to see what other people are doing. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.